We explain the time change. This is Ben. He manages a team and takes punctuality seriously. His work week starts every Monday with a team meeting. But this Monday, Ben isn't there. He arrives an hour late. How did that happen? Ben forgot about the time change. He wonders why there is such a thing in the first place. On the internet, Ben finds out that the entire calendar and timekeeping system is based on the sun's position. As the Earth moves around the sun, its orbit is not a perfect circle, but an oval-shaped ellipse. So our distance from the sun varies throughout the year. Depending on the Earth's position relative to the sun, the angle of the sun's rays also changes. That's why in the winter, there's less sunlight than in the summer. The Earth takes one year to complete a full orbit around the Sun. As a result, the Sun's position affects our daylight hours much more than the Earth's rotation does. In order to make the most of the summer month's daylight and bring energy use down, many countries change their clocks twice a year. In Europe, the switch to daylight saving time, or summertime, happens on the last Sunday in March. So that night at 2 a.m., Ben moves his clocks one hour ahead to 3 a.m. Standard, or winter time, starts on the last Sunday in October. So at 3 a.m., Ben will move his clocks one hour back. Spring ahead, fall behind. In the United States, the time change happens on the second Sunday in March and the first Sunday in November. However, large parts of Asia and Africa don't change their clocks at all. So across the world, there isn't one unified rule. But the time change also has critics. Doctors point to sleeping disruptions. Farmers complain of reduced revenue. And scholars question the claims of energy savings. When the next time change rolls around, Ben will now be perfectly prepared. But as for the team meeting, to be safe, he'll reschedule it for another day of the week. And how do you remember to change the clocks?